it's time for another Cubase tutorial and while Cubase is loading let me warn you that I am not at all a professional at this so I am not going to be professional at all okay yeah so now Cubase is open we're going to talk about uh, starting a new project in Cubase and all the things that go into that because there's a lot more than just uh, clicking new file this isn't Microsoft Word okay Alright, so, first thing, when you open up Cubase, it'll either be blank or you'll have this thing, the open recent documents uh, box, I guess you'd call it. Uh, if you don't have that, it doesn't matter, you just hit new project, because we're talking about starting up a new project. So I'm just going to exit this, and you could, you could click that, or hit file, new project. And then what you will have here is options uh, for like different templates Cubase comes with different templates like 16 MIDI tracks, 8 mono, 6 stereo audio tracks, different things uh, those are pretty useful but we're just gonna go with an empty track because we don't know what we're doing most of the time when I start uh, I just use an empty track because I don't even know how many tracks I'm gonna need most of the time I haven't even finished writing the song yet. So yeah, we're just going to go with an empty track because it's simpler. Uh, this, this is pretty important. Uh, you select the folder where you're going to save your file. It's important to pick one and remember where it is because that's where all your audio, there's a pool of audio, everything you record is going to be saved someplace. And they're going to be saved in WAV files and just so you don't delete anything and just for your information you need to know what that is. Uh, I'm not going to be recording anything for this tutorial so I'm just going to pick uh, just some random folder and just hit OK. Alright, um, first thing you're going to want to do is save the file as something because right now you see if you look closely at the uh, top here clearly it says this is untitled, this is a random untitled project. We don't want that. So we hit File, Save As, and uh, I'll go ahead and save that as a Tutorial. Didn't spell that right, but that's okay. Alright, so now as you can see, we have a file here. Now, what you're also going to want to do is make sure your autosave option is enabled, because everyone knows especially if your computer is like older things can crash and if they do crash you could have been working for hours or however long and if you didn't save it you're done so since you don't want to lose all your work you need to go to file almost forgot there preferences and you're going to want to go into your general preferences. Skip down the parents editing, all that. Skip down the general. The autosave box here should be checked off. And here are some autosave options. Uh, autosave time interval. Two minutes. Uh, well, that's what mine is set to. And the maximum amount of backup files is 10. A good safe number is like two or three. I have 10 and I, I save so frequently because I'm kind of paranoid that the government is gonna, you know, come uh, through, through the, the interwebs and delete my files and try and stop my music and the spread of free love throughout of America. So it's important that if you, if you want free love to continue that your autosave settings are frequent and you got a lot of backup files, a lot of them. Okay. So we're just going to click OK here. You can also click Apply, but I mean, there's already my settings, so that's not even necessary for me. Uh, and then the last thing you're going to want to look at before you start recording is your project setup. So you go to Project, and then you go to Project Setup. Uh, and also, when you go through this, make sure you note all the uh, hotkeys, all the short ups, uh, shortcuts. So, I mean, those, those are good to remember. I'm just going through the menu because it's like easier for you to follow 
maybe I don't even know that it is I'm just assuming and anyway yeah what you have here in this first box is the start and end this will well the start and the length it pretty much determines how long a project is if you already have a general idea of how long the song is going to be say you practice it with your band or whatever uh, and you know that the project is going to be three minutes you might want to go ahead and uh, change that to three minutes or however long because by default it could have like some ridiculous time or maybe you you were uh, recording a dream theater cover and it's 16 minutes long uh, at last time and this time you're recording a Jonas Brothers cover and it's only gonna be 2 minutes and 45 seconds uh, you don't want to waste all that space and all that extra time at the end of your project right here because it's gonna go on for like practically forever and that's unnecessary Frame rate it has to do with when you're, you know, outputting and inputting things like to different programs on screen. Really, don't need to worry about that. This, this is pretty important. Your display format, um, pretty much it has the different things that show up on this bar here at the top of the window, your project window. You can choose beats and bars, which is what it usually is. But I mean, there's seconds, like the seconds of uh, you know, time in your audio project. Wow, I'm I'm trying to record a tutorial. I'm trying to be no. What is it? What is it? Huh? Yes, he's in the basement. Gosh. Wow, I am so sorry about that. Very unprofessional. But you know what? We're we're gonna say gonna stay positive. Gonna stay relaxed here and uh, continue okay <laughs> uh where was i um yeah um i don't even remember what I, okay yeah yeah there's seconds there's time code samples fps pretty much you kind of want to save it on bars beat seconds time code those are pretty you really samples and I mean I guess for certain things it's useful but bars and beats seconds you know stuff like that it usually works pretty fine just whatever you prefer um, display offset again you don't need to worry about that uh, it has to do with like different screens and, and outputting to different stuff sample rate I talked about a little bit in the last video the higher the sample rate well you set that stuff in your your audio interface remember when I was talking about that earlier last tutorial yeah uh -huh yeah so um the higher the sample rate and the higher the recording format the higher quality but also uh larger files come with the higher quality stuff 16 bit is cd quality anything higher gets really good uh, you should leave it at like 16 24 i mean 32 if you your audio interface supports that and uh if you're pro, um, recording file type, uh, WAV file is the safest for Windows and Mac and everything. Uh, you should probably leave it there. I mean, you, you could also save it as different stuff, but pretty much WAV file is like the standard thing. And stereo pan, you just leave that at equal power. So that's it for setting up a new project. Next video is going to be on recording. So clearly I'm not a professional, but uh, if I had more subscribers, I'd probably be more professional. So if you could just help me out with that, that'd be great. Thanks.